All right, Tim, we could have an interesting discussion <laughs> on this one. If building a new system from scratch, would you go Intel for the slightly better price to performance or AMD for the platform longevity? So I guess we'll just gem talk. We won't focus in any specific like high-end or mid-range CPU matchup. Yeah. We'll just sort of generally talk about it. Um, do you have anything to add first? Since I was sort of given my <laughs> initial impressions and opinions in the reviews. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's a really difficult. It is. It's yeah. a really difficult question. Mm -hmm. Like when I was when I saw this question last night, uh, preparing for this Q and A, I sort of thought, yeah, how am I even going to answer this? Because honestly, I don't know. Like, I, I think there's sort of pros and cons for going about it each way. And mm -hmm. I think, especially like I know you said talking about it generally, but even. It really does depend as well on what sort of product you're looking at. Like if I was going for a, a Core i5 type build, then that that product seems really compelling right mm. now. Whereas at the high end, you know, which way would I go? I, I don't know. It's like how much weight do you put on the future platform support? And it's kind of like we know that there will be future platform support, but what does that even mean? Yeah. Like do, is there going to be enough of a performance uplift to, to make that worthwhile? Mm. Or is like buying the... Raptor Lake part now going to serve me for two or three generations. I won't even need to worry about upgrading. Like there's, there's so many things to consider there that I, I, I just don't even know. Do you, I mean, you've obviously said some stuff in the reviews about what you would go with, but yes, well, I agree with everything you've said. Obviously, if we knew how well Zen Five, Zen Six were going to turn out and the kind of gains you could get there, that would make the decision. Paying a bit of a premium for an AM Five motherboard now, perhaps worth it, especially if you knew like a whatever they call a Zen 6 series CPU, if that offered huge performance gains, dropped into a 600 series board and basically worked as well as the boards that are to come years yeah. down the track from now, then that would be a really compelling option. But of course, without a crystal ball and knowing the future, it's, you know, and, and you don't really know what Intel's doing either as well. So they could, you know, have something that's significantly better. So as you say, there's a lot of depends there. Uh, I think, as you say, at the Core i5, given... Yeah, if you're looking at productivity performance as well as gaming performance, then I think the core, the, the core i5 is really a bit of a no-brainer. Yeah. And I think the fact that you can get that on cheaper motherboards that are readily available, Z690 motherboards, I think that's the way I'd go there. But yeah, at the high end, again, if productivity and gaming were equally prioritized, then yeah, like a 7950X, I think that's hard to go past, in my opinion. I think that's probably the way I'd be going there over the core i9, which is just... You know, you, yeah. you can power limit it, but once you do that, then it, it is slower in core heavy productivity workloads. And if you're prioritizing that as much as gaming, then or equal prioritization, then yeah. So I think that's, but with the Core i5, one, one thing I will say is I am working on a new content piece that I'm hoping to have out this week. Uh, we'll look at the 13600K, the 12600K, the 7600X, the 5600X and the 5800X 3D. So those C CPUs, those kind of, I would say, your go-to value options. There's also the Ryzen 5 5600 non-X, but yeah, yeah. one in the same. You can make pricing adjustments pretty easily there. I'm testing all of those CPUs with sort of the best memory that you can get out of the box for them. Then the sort of sweet spot memory. So DDR4, 3600, uh, CL16, for example, the sort of sweet spot memory there for the DDR4 platforms. I'll be testing uh, the 7600X with DDR5 5200. So stuff that's sort of down towards the sweet spot in terms of pricing for DDR4. And just doing the 12 game benchmarks all over, all over again. So it's actually worked out to be more gaming benchmarks than what I had in the reviews. But then we'll be able to do really detailed down to the dollar type stuff, uh, platform costs for DDR memory. We'll, we'll account for like budget motherboards and stuff like that. So. It'll be a really in-depth look at cost per frame and the value analysis of all those various popular CPUs right now. So that'll at least answer, I think, the Core i5 portion of this discussion really well. But uh, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you just brought up the 5800X3 and I think that is kind of, you know, we're talking about if you're building a new PC, obviously that's kind of a, a different discussion. But for a lot of people who are already on some sort of platform, it's kind of... Yes. That kind of takes out a lot of the Well, the compared options. to the other CPUs, it's it's definitely easier to cool, which was a concern initially with that part. Yeah, but I, mean, I don't think... Would you build a new 5800X 3D system right now or would you just go straight in? Because I think... 
personally for me, like if I was building either of these systems, if I was building Intel, I would go with the DDR5 platform as opposed to DDR4. Well, I mean, these are all the concerns, so, isn't which it? Which is like, if you go with the DDR4 platform, then when you upgrade, you're sort of, you're sort of tacking on an additional cost, whereas maybe you could transfer across your, depending on how good of a DDR5 well, look, memory the, kit you the get. Well, look, the DDR5 kit is, especially for the performance we sh uh, sh showed in our review, it's about two and a half times more expensive. Hmm. So if Sweet Spot CL16, which is going to be slower than the CL14 dual rank stuff we included, uh, but basically that will answer all of those questions. You're about to, real, yeah. you're about to see a really clear picture of how performance is across those different configurations and then what the value is there when buying a hundred dollar memory opposed to like 200 250 memory whatever it is at the moment but i i agree i would at the high end certainly go ddr5 i, I think yep. i think that that's going to become uh, increasingly obvious that that's the smarter memory to invest in as we get more games that you know utilize memory bandwidth which certainly seems to be the trend we're seeing so i don't think it's going to be too long I'm, I'm sure in a year from now we'll be sitting there saying yeah ddr5 was the way to go for for a lot of those platforms but anyway we'll, we'll revisit that and as i said the the value comparison thing is coming up hopefully i'll get it out shortly but there's a lot of testing involved in that one